Okay, before we dive in, let's get interactive, okay? So I want you to raise your hands if you have ever watched a sci-fi movie and thought, wow, I would really love to upload my mind into the cloud and live forever. Raise your hand. Okay, so there are quite ambitious and sci-fi lovers in the crowd. <laughs> now raise your hand if you have ever used a Fitbit, a smartwatch or a health app in your phone. Okay, so almost everyone. Now, what if I tell you that these gadgets are just the tip of the iceberg of a digital health revolution and that these sci-fi stories are not so far away in the future? Today, we're going to explore this transformative power of digital health and how it's not just a game changer for the healthcare system, but also a necessity for our future well-being. Because let's be clear, in we, if we don't get our digital health game on point, we may end up living in a real life episode of Black Mirror and we don't want that to happen. Okay, so let's start with one of the key indicators of good health, which is life expectancy. So before the 1900, the average life expectancy on Earth was 30 years. However, around this point, there was this significant nonlinear increase in life expectancy, mainly due to uh, medical advancements like vaccines and antibiotics, public health regulations like better water quality and better sanitation, the industrialization, education, and social reforms such as healthcare systems and labor laws. And you may think, this has nothing to do with digital health. It has not. Digital health was born in the late 60s, which what it's called electronic health record, which was a revolutionary step into digitalizing the patient information. And then afterwards in the 80s, there was the introduction of this medical imaging technologies such as MRI and CT scans, which allowed for non-invasive diagnostics. Then in the 19th, thanks to the growth of the internet, telemedicine was more active, more present. And then from the 2000 on, 2000 on you know that there has been this rise, rise of wearables, machine learning, and AI, right? And all, everything applicable to health. And now where we are. So I like to think that we are starting in a digital twin era. Okay, and let me tell you what a digital twin is. So imagine this is you. Okay, not bad. Now imagine a virtual representation of you. How would this look like? Please don't think of something like this. Okay, this is not like a, a video game or a sci-fi story. No, no, I want to imagine a virtual you that mimics your biological systems that is able to simulate how your body would react to lifestyle changes, to diseases that you may develop, and how your body would react to specific treatments that you may have. And all this in a risk-free and virtual environment. And it sounds very good. Some of you may think that this is the future, but it, this is actually happening now. Okay, so I will put you three, three clear examples where you may already have a digital twin of yourself out there. For example, if you go to the dental clinic, they do a 3D scan of your mouth, and they create this mouth replica of you that they use to design these plastic trays, for example, instead of the brackets that we were using before. And these are personalized for your mouth. Then in the company where I work, we are basically creating neuro twins which are computational models of your brain that we fit with the patient's data, and we use these neurotwins in order to optimize non-invasive brain stimulation for patients with drug-resistant epilepsy, depression, and Alzheimer's disease. And there is other people here that are actually developing models of your heart, that they are in augmented reality, and then the doctor comes, puts the glasses, and they see your heart in 3D, and this helps planning their interventions. Okay, and now with all this information, it's very easy to imagine a complete digital twin of yourself. Okay, so a digital twin that with real-time monitoring, it gets more accurate or with re regular checkups as well, that is able to, with predictive analytics, raise the flag before something serious happens to you, and that is able to, to, to design these personalized treatment plans for you specifically. And this early intervention 
decreases this uh, hospital um, admissions and also healthcare costs. These tailored interventions are more effective because we know that in the health, healthcare system there is no one size fits all. We are very different, right? And with these technologies, we're slowly transitioning from what is called reactive healthcare, which means I get sick, I go to the doctor, I get diagnosed and I get treated, to a more proactive healthcare. When we do regular checkups, we can identify risks, uh, risks early, and then we can tailor some prevention strategies before something serious really happens. And all of this looks super promising. Right? Because imagine, before I go here, imagine even that digit, these digital twins are super accurate. And that we can even think of something like the first stages of a clinical trial developed in the cloud. Right? So that would really change the way we look at drug development. This would even prevent animal testing and accelerate it, accelerate the development of drugs for humans. Right? But all of these obviously raise some concerns. Like you think of this, this is super beautiful, super exciting, super promising, but what about privacy, security, ethics and regulations, right? So protecting, protecting this sensitive data, health data should be a priority. Also, we have this growth of medical imaging data, right? And with this growth of data, there is an increase of risk for data breaches. So cybersecurity is an essential element in this, both for providers of healthcare and users. And also us, as developers and researchers, need to, need to be responsible when developing and deploying AI systems and digital twins as well, in order to avoid any harm. And for that, we need to have gov governmental bodies aligned with us and for them to keep the, p the pace with our medical and technological advancements. Because all of this digital health revolution that I was telling you about, in this digital health revolution, this collective responsibility is vital. We need to actively address these challenges in order to have a more advanced, just, and equitable healthcare system for everyone. Okay, and now let's go back to this graph here. I want to show you some of the possible future things that may happen, okay, and you will choose which one you prefer best, okay? So, we can get extinct, <laughs> okay, this is a reality, it has a very low probability of happening, but okay, we may die, right? There is an asteroid impact that comes, bye-bye humans. Then what can also happen is that events such as pandemics, climate change, or nuclear wars, wars they can really shift this trend that we have been going down. And this has already happened. So the graph that I showed before was until four years ago. Now if you Google and you check like uh, life expectancy today or whatever, you can see that COVID pandemic had already made its dent here. And digital twins, if we keep developing these te technologies may help prevent this from happening as well. So what else can happen? Okay, so we beat all the mortality risks Right? So we're humans, we grow age, but we have a happy life, and digital twins can help improve this quality of life. We reduce a lot of mortality rates for many other diseases, right? but not aging. Aging is something that it's there. We're humans, we have our lifespan, and we may stay just stable here for a while. Okay? And then, if you want to think more no, say, futuristic, no, I would say, then you can say, okay, we can beat aging, we just keep increasing our lifespan and better quality of life. And we just go up, up, up until who knows, okay? And for the sci-fi lovers, that is also this option, right? So we really <laughs> understand what consciousness is. We are able to get our consciousness there, upload it into the, our virtual twin there in the cloud, and live forever happy and with many diseases at all. And with this, I finish, but uh, as we look into the future, the question isn't how long we will live, it's how well we will live. And that's where digital health comes in, offering tools not just to extend our lives, but to enrich it. Thank you.